In today's video, we will delve into a detailed analysis of the two epic battles fought against the formidable opponent, Theocles. These thrilling clashes occurred within two different mediums, the TV series featuring Crixus and Spartacus, and the lesser-known comic Spartacus Devisdu Spartacus, where Theocles faced off against animes. By comparing these encounters, we'll uncover the nuances and differences that make each rendition unique. First, for those who have exclusively watched the series, let's talk about how Theocles was introduced. The series portrayed his arrival brilliantly, primarily through Varro's tales. Interestingly, in the comic, Theocles was depicted as even larger than his series counterpart. As the battle commenced, it initially appeared evenly matched against Crixus and Spartacus, but Theocles rose to his feet despite sustaining grievous wounds his nonchalant remark, Capua shall I begin, highlighted his incredible resistance to cuts and blades as previously emphasized by Varro. Capua shall I begin! <laughs> Crixus, eager to take on the Shadow of Death in a one-on-one -on -one duel, attempted to confront Theocles but soon found himself overpowered. Even after stabbing Theocles, Crixus' blow seemed ineffective. Theocles mocked him and delivered a brutal headbutt, sending Crixus to the ground. Just as Theocles was about to finish off Capua's champion, Spartacus intervened, showcasing remarkable combat prowess even in his early days, far from his true prime days. However, it was clear that Spartacus stood no chance alone, and Crixus had to join forces with him to bring down their indomitable adversary. It's crucial to note that this version of Theocles was past his prime, a retired fighter. However, his resilience, combat abilities and pain tolerance mainly remained nearly identical to his glory days. Spartacus and Crixus exhibited commendable teamwork, with Crixus using his helmet to momentarily obstruct Theocles' vision and aid Spartacus. This allowed them to ultimately defeat Theocles. Nonetheless, if we were to consider Theocles from the comic, the true embodiment of the character, he wouldn't have fallen to his knees as he did in the series when stabbed by Spartacus towards the end of their fight. This disparity between the series and the comic versions is quite noticeable, and I don't believe that Crixus and Spartacus within that fight would have beaten the golden day Theocles that is displayed in the comic, where he was, you know, coming newly into the arena and fighting more often, as well as training. This essentially concludes the battle between Crixus, Spartacus versus Theocles in the series. Now, let's turn our attention to the comic version. In the comic, their clash begins with Theocles dispatching numerous opponents before the real showdown against Animaeus. Neither Theocles nor Animaeus wear substantial armor. Animes, in fact, only wears a helmet. Theocles wears basically nothing in this bare naked on the top of his body. Theocles admires Animes' impressive strength and muscular physique as they begin their fight. The fight between Theocles and Animes is a masterclass in the dual wielding fighting style, known as Demacheus fighting style. With both combatants wielding two swords, Animes lands several blows on Theocles, but the Shadow of Death remains unfazed. Even when Animes stabs Theocles in the right shoulder, Theocles exhibits no sign of pain and effortlessly knocks Animes away. Initially, the battle appeared evenly matched, but Theocles soon demonstrated his overwhelming superiority. Remarkably, their fight extends for hours, showcasing Animes' considerable skill as the champion of Capua in that time, though it wasn't enough to best the Shadow of Death. During the battle, Theocles still has Animes' sword impaled through his body. This detail, akin to the series, underscores Theocles' remarkable pain tolerance. Ultimately, Animes is overpowered, thrown to the ground, and Theocles, in a manner reminiscent of his fight with Crixus in the series, slashes Animes on the back. The scar on Theocles' face featured in the series actually originates from this intense battle in the comic. This was one of the first 
slashes which Theopolis received from enemies in their fight. Throughout this extended encounter, the sword remains lodged within Theocles. It not only pierces through him, but also passes entirely through his back. Astonishingly, Theocles shows no reaction to this excruciating wound, much like his portrayal in the series. Theocles listens to the crowd and to Melita, who shouts, No, Animaeus. Melita is Animaeus' wife, who calls out Animaeus. Her voice reminds Theocles of his own mother, and this, combined with Animaeus' unwavering bravery in enduring hours of battle, prompts Theocles to say to Animaeus, Grasp your sword. Animaeus compiles, removing the sword from Theocles and witnessing, in avid fear, the sheer monstrosity of his adversary Theocles, the Shadow of Death. The match is essentially declared a draw. But obviously, anime sees it as a personal loss and a dishonor, which it basically is if you think about it, whereas the city views it differently. Importantly, anime remains at Theocles' mercy throughout this fight, illustrating the power imbalance. This essentially encapsulates the epic battle within the comic. It's worth noting that Theocles soon retires after this fight. However, when he hears of Crixus, the champion of Capua, taking up the challenge, he returns to the arena. If we were to transpose the comic version of Theocles into the series, Spartacus and Crixus would have faced insurmountable odds. The swords they wielded would have proven practically useless against this formidable opponent, even if they attempted clever tactics. The comics Theocles would not have toyed with them, he would have swiftly eliminated them both. Perhaps by the end of the series, Spartacus, at the height of his abilities, might have stood a chance, especially alongside a fighter like Gannicus. This, however, remains speculative. In conclusion, what stands out in the series is its portrayal of Theocles' incredible resistance to pain and his impressive pain tolerance. The differences between the series and comic versions of Theocles are substantial, particularly in terms of his strength and durability. These variations offer fans of both mediums unique insights into the character and the epic battles he partakes in. Theocles, whether in the series or in the comic, basically remains a legendary and unforgettable figure in the world of gladiators and epic combat. And taken only from the comic, Theocles is still an undefeated someone, you know. But of course, in the series, it was beaten by Crixus and Spartacus ultimately. So, to sum up the differences between the comic and the series, the comic Theocles is not retired and still fights in the arena, as he was freshly captured by Rome and still in the early days, though still a monster. His series version was basically a watered-down version of Theocles. Animes as Doctori is in my opinion much stronger than his past self, as he was able to easily best Spartacus and Crixus in their practice bout and has clearly seen many fighting styles throughout the years, which clearly showed his superiority against the both. The Animes in the series would have beaten the Theocles in the series solo in my opinion, when already Crixus and the semi-prime Spartacus were able to, you know, whom were beaten by the same day by Animaeus before the fight with Theocles began. This should already speak volumes for that regard.